I grew up in a, a what do you call it, suburbs, and a lot of trees, you know, and in a nice, a big, middle-class house. And uh, in New York, I was living in this crummy cold water flat with a bathtub in there, with crazy neighbors knocking on your walls, and uh, drunks on the drunks were in their vomit on the street. You know, and there was a whore house next door, you know, and there was a slaughterhouse and, the, and the, uh, the sidewalk was full of fat. It was really a uh, uh, shock to me and depressing. I, I didn't, didn't like it at all. You know how you get married, you're supposed to be carried across the threshold. There was a big dead rat right in the inside of the door. So that was a uh, good morning. Welcome to New York. The summer here in New York, I mean, I kind of lose all my energy, finally be like a, a, a rag. So better to go to Maine. Well, uh, Maine seems very much something in the past for me. I haven't been there to work for a very long time. I liked the way people lived and how they helped one another or didn't help one another. And <laughs> It seemed very, uh, very real to me, very likable. What I think about it is, you know, that it was warm in the middle of the day and cold in the morning and cold in the afternoon and really cold at night. So of course I remember that. We thought, you know, if we were smart, we would find our own place. And we thought, why don't we go look at the coast? We like the idea of the coast of Maine. So does everybody else. <laughs> We got the idea of what you needed to have if you wanted to come to Maine. You need a place to swim, number one. We we're all swimmers. Uh, number two, you need a barn to paint in. And it would be good if you had a dirt road that had hardly any traffic on it. And Maine was a great, beautiful light in Maine. In, in school, I would make a painting. It took 18 hours. In Maine, I was making a painting in uh, an afternoon, and that—that's what—that's what—that was the thing. Of Maine, Maine was the thing. Open, real opened it up. Maine, Maine was like a vehicle. In 1952, uh, a group of us decided that we should start our own gallery in 10th Street called the Tanager Gallery. 10th Street became a kind of destination for all the arty types in the city. I hung around uh, the Tanager Gallery on 10th Street, and in the afternoons you go there and people were talking, and you just listen, listen to it, and they've got a, a terrific education. That was my MFA program, because we visited all these people, saw their work, made decisions about whether we thought we'd include them or give them a one-man show or whatever. I got the scholarship, but in Cooper Union, the guy comes over to me, the dean, and says, do you want to go to Yale or, or Skowhegan? And Bill King went to Skowhegan and had a great time. And he said, and Skowhegan is one week more. So I said, let's go to Skowhegan. I got to Maine through friends. The friends were all going to the Skowhegan School. That was Alex and, and Jean Cohen. And they fell in love with Maine. And then we thought, real estate is cheap in Maine. We could buy a place there for about what people were renting cottages for for a summer on Long Island. So Alex found this place in Lincolnville. Lois started, Jean and I chipped in and bought it. The place was $1,200. So we each put in 600 bucks. It was falling down, and I, every, every summer would uh, give me $100 and I'd do something. I could put the roof on the first year, and then put the roof on the barn, and the, the, the barn was down 14 inches. I jacked it up, and we found a whole bunch of stones. We ro rolled them over, Lois and I. We rolled the stones up and I built the wall. The wall's still there. Well, it uh, was my teacher in school. And Welliver had just bought his place, and I went up there, and um, 
I thought, well, at this price, my father had died and left me $4,000. I thought, you know, if I bought one of these houses, I could uh, pay it off right away and still have $1,000 left for expenses for the next summer. We came to visit Alex one fall before he was going to go back. We stayed in this shack, and all the people are in that famous painting. Grad did a, a, a with Rudy on the roof and so forth. OK, this is Rudy Burkhardt on the roof painting. This is Red, who made the piece going in the door. This is Edwin Denby walking in, along the road. The house was right near the road, characteristically. This is me reading. This is Yvonne Jaquette with uh, baby Thomas Burkhardt. And this is Jacob Burkhardt on the bicycle and his friend who was visiting. And this is Ada Katz. And this is Alex Katz and their son Vincent. And so you had a bunch of people and Friday nights we'd all go to someone's house. No, it was very, it was quite social. And it was very convivial, but I'm just saying there were a lot of chores. There wasn't running water. We had a pump and there was an outhouse. So we had to fill up a, a huge clean garbage can to get water. And then Red figure out the way that we do dishes. We would have a lot of paper towels. After we finished our meal, we'd s s try to scrape off all the food and then, then we had a tiny bit of water from the garbage can <laughs> to finally clean off the rest of the dishes. And so that's how we managed that, that summer. So Maine had a thing where if you painted anywhere, no one seemed to bother. They had tons of uh, uh, amateur painters in Maine. If I took out an easel on 173rd Street in Queens, people think that kid is nuts. And I felt great when I was painting outdoors. The paintings weren't so hot. And I was trying to figure out how to make a modern, realistic painting. Remember, Alex always went out with his stuff and was painting outside. I thought, well, why don't I try what he's been doing? So I quickly got to like that so much that it became essential to go away. <laughs> and look at nature firsthand, yeah, and paint from it directly. I made drawings of foliage outside my farm barn, and I thought, I'm not getting this, I'm not getting this. It's still stationary, it's not like the outdoors. So I had to start all over again. And the, the drawings that I did, then I, I made it two drawings every day for the rest of that summer. And I came out of it able to make a mobile edge, a, a, a shivering, shimmering edge. And that was the thing that I had wanted to do, and I did it. You know, we were active all summer painting. And at that time, I, you know, it was still fearless. I developed fear over the years, but I was fearless still. When you come here, when you're younger, you have a time to sort your ideas out and you get away from, uh, what is that called? Uh, the kind of thinking that's conventional thinking. You take, you take your breath and say, yes, this is the way I'm going. 